This video is about child-friendly settings on an iPad. The good people at Apple have recently updated their operating system and with it came some amazing child-friendly options. They do take a little while to set up and this video is gonna help you navigate through all of those new features. Welcome to the Awareness Module. How's it going everybody? PJ here from the Awareness Module where we are bridging the gaps between life and education. On this channel we discuss how to influence young minds so that they can find success not just in the classrooms but ultimately in their lives. If that sounds appealing to you, make sure to hit that subscribe button and don't forget to check the bell so you get all the updates. Let's get into the brand new iPad kid-friendly settings. Now you may notice that some of the things I talk about in this video are not relating to your iPad and it could be because you're using the old operating system. Big shout out to all the people who left comments on my older video. It made me realize that Apple made some changes and it's kind of what spawned this video right here. So if you have any questions or comments or concerns about this video, make sure to leave it in the comments because I do check it regularly and I'll do my best to answer. If you are not getting your answers fulfilled by this video, take a look at the card above. That is the old operating system and the old kid-friendly settings. You may be able to get your answers there. Now. Just to clarify, this video is basically how to set limits as well as limit content, specific content on the iPad so your child can navigate safely and so that you don't have to constantly have to police and keep thinking about the iPad. It will take a lot of stress out of your life. The first feature I want to show you is how to lock the home button. This is very, very useful if the child is using your device. Sometimes I let kids use my iPad and I want to make sure that they can't just peruse around the iPad and do whatever they want and download stuff. So I ask them to pick an app and then I lock the home button so they have to stay in that app. It's a very, very useful feature and it's called guided access. I'll teach you how to turn it on. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna go into settings. And on the left hand side, you're gonna look for the little gearbox and it says general. So tap on general. And then on the right hand side, you'll see a bunch of different menu options. What I want you to do is go into accessibility. It's about the sixth one down and it's all by itself there. So hit accessibility and then again that screen's gonna change and you're gonna see a whole bunch of other options. Scroll down the right side of the screen all the way down to the bottom and second from the bottom under learning it says guided access. Touch guided access. And then you're gonna see a little toggle switch on the very top and you wanna press that button it'll turn green and kinda move over to the right and now you can start guided access. If it's the first time you're doing this, you might see a password pop up. This is the password that you wanna set in order to use guided access. Make sure you don't forget that password. I'm gonna say it again. Don't forget that password that you put in there. The reason being is because if you initiate guided access and you don't remember the password, it's gonna be very, very difficult to get back into this iPad. It just locks it down, okay? So make sure you remember what that passcode is. Um, you can also go to passcode settings and then set guided access passcode, and then you punch it in once. It's gonna ask you to punch it in again because of the importance of it. And then there you go, it's set. Also on that page under accessibility and guided access, you'll see that there's a thing that says time limits. Now. This is not to set a time limit on an iPad app. What this does is it just sets what the reminder is when the time limit's about to be over. And that's hardwired to be one minute. So one minute left in any time limit, it's going to let them know. And it can let them know either by a sound, you can set an alarm, or um, by speech, it'll say one minute left. So you can decide what that is. Um, the other things on here, accessibility shortcut, um, yeah, you're gonna tap that, keep that on, and then mirror display or auto, auto lock. Um, I'm not 100% sure what that does, so I wouldn't mess with that. Right now, we're just figuring out how to lock the home button. So once you do that, it's set. This is how guided access works. Let's say you go into an app. I'm going into Lightbot here. Great um, coding app for kids, actually. Anyway, not important. So you go into the app that you want them to use or are gonna allow them to use. And then what you wanna do is you wanna triple click the home button. So one, two, three. And what's gonna happen is the screen's gonna like push back and it's gonna give you some menu options on the outskirts of um, that screen. So on the top left, it's gonna say cancel. On the top right, it's gonna say start. 
And the most important thing is on the bottom left, it says options. So click on options. From here, you can turn off various features of the iPad. So I usually have the sleep wake button off because that's the whole point of this is to turn off that sleep wake button. You can also adjust turn off the volume switches. So sometimes I turn off the volume switches if um, I'm somewhere or the maybe the class is doing something specific and I don't want the child to turn on the volume, I'll lock, I'll turn off the volume button so that they can't change the volume in any way. And there's other things as well that you can turn off there, but those are the two I, I work with mainly. Another thing you can do here is if on the bottom of that options menu there, if you turn that on, you can set time limits. This is where you set a time limit and you can set that time limit to pretty much anything that you want. Once you set that time limit to where you want it to be, then you're gonna go to the top right corner and hit start. The screen will go back to normal and it will tell you the time limit that you set for um, the guided access. Now, if you touch the home button on the top screen, it will say you need to triple click the home button to exit. Once you triple click the home button, that passcode is gonna come up. It's gonna show you the enter passcode screen. You need to enter the passcode that you initiated guided access with. So. You're going to punch that in. If you punch in the wrong access code, the, it won't let you do it again for at least 10 seconds. And if you get it wrong again, it's going to be, I think it's 30 seconds and so on and so forth. And eventually, you're just not going to be able to get into it. So this is why it's very, very important to remember what that guided access password is because getting out of it can be a nightmare. And to get out of guided access, again, you triple click, punch in your password, and then on the top left-hand side, it'll say end, and then you can turn it off, and now you can just navigate the iPad normally. So that is guided access, very, very useful, again, if you are allowing children to use your iPad. Now, originally in the old operating system, this is where a lot of the other limitations were found in that similar accessibility area. They've changed it, and I love the changes that Apple has done. Parents, this one's for you, okay? Are you tired of arguing with your kids when it's iPad time? Are you tired of having to hide the iPad? Are you tired of your kids sneaking the iPad at five in the morning and playing when they're not supposed to? Yeah, all of that, all of that stress, all of that annoyance, all that frustration, kiss it goodbye because you don't have to deal with that anymore. Let me show you how it's done. What you wanna do is you wanna go into settings, okay? And then the second category, on the bottom of the second category, it says notification, sounds, do not disturb, and screen time. Click screen time. Now the first thing it's gonna show you on the top, on the right hand side, the top, it's gonna to show you how much time the iPad has actually been used for. This is really handy. Click on that bar graph, and now it will actually show you what specific apps were used and for how long. This is really, really handy, just a great way to track what are your kids doing on the iPad? What are they looking at on the iPad? What are they playing on the iPad? Now you know exactly what they're playing and where they're spending their time. That's a side note, let's get to the good stuff. Just underneath that bar graph, there's a bunch of new options and I'm gonna go into detail with all of these. The first thing I want you to do is I want you to go to screen time passcode. I think that's what it's called. Mine says change screen time passcode because I've already said it, but you're gonna click that. I think it's blue, it should be blue. Click that, it's gonna ask you uh, to create a, a, a passcode again. And this is the passcode that it's gonna be very, very handy. So you can make it the same as your guided access. You can make it different, it's, it's up to you. Once you set that passcode, it's gonna open up a world of possibilities for you. Let's go to the first one, downtime, okay? So just under that bar graph, it says downtime. It's a picture of a clock. Click on that. It's gonna ask you to put in your passcode, put in the passcode. This is phenomenal. What you can now do on the iPads is you can literally turn it off. It is unaccessible for a time frame that you choose. Okay, this is huge. You can set it so it's the same every single day or you can customize it for what days you want what. So let's say for example, um, on a weekday, I only want my kids to have access on the iPad for two hours a day. Anything outside of that two hours, I don't want them to access it. I can do that now. So let's see, let's go to Sunday. So I'm gonna start Sunday because that is gonna go all the way into Monday. So let's say I start Sunday and on Sunday I'm like, okay, on Sunday they can use the iPad, I want the iPad to turn off around eight o'clock. You know, they gotta get, well, maybe seven, because they gotta get ready for school, get ready for the day um, for tomorrow. So at 7 p.m., this iPad's gonna shut off on Sunday, okay? And then I can click down to two, so that's from, and then two, Monday, um, I don't want them to use it until 6 p.m. So from 7 p.m. on Sunday 
to 6 p.m. on Monday, this iPad is now completely inaccessible. They can't actually get into it. And then I'm gonna hit downtime on the top, boom, that is now set. And you can literally go through every single day and do that. This is huge, okay? Now what may, is even more interesting is you can limit the specifics of it, right? So you can, on the very bottom of that screen, on the, the downtime screen, it says everyday custom days, and at the very bottom it says block at downtime. So block at downtime means the whole iPad's just gonna shut off, they can't access anything at all, okay? You can do that if you want, and then just toggle that and that's it. You can also do this though. They've turned it up a notch here, good job Apple. You can also go to uh, always allowed. So we're gonna skip the apps, uh, the app limits for now, and we're gonna go to always allowed. And it's the green one with the check marks. So you gotta back up a little bit to just the screen time main uh, menu where it shows the, the time on the top and everything like that. So I'm gonna go to always allowed. You can select the apps that you don't mind your child always having access to. Things like, you know, maybe Epic, a, a book reading app, um, some sort of creative app. You don't mind, maybe you don't mind your child using those whenever they want, right? You want them to be able to read whenever they want? Great, I'm gonna turn on Epic, for example. So you can turn it on and you can select the things that you always want available. So even if the iPad's in downtime, they're still able to access certain things. I find it very, very handy. If you want a, a good list of specific apps, um, that you might want to have your kids always have access to. Um, take a look at the card above here and it's just a, a list of great apps, educational apps that I think are very, very useful. So there's always allowed. I don't think there's anything else I need to show you there. No, okay. So those always allowed, you can set apps that you always want accessible, no matter downtime or not, they're available. Here's another thing you can do. Now let's go to app limits. It's the orange with a little um, hourglass on it. Hit app limits, go add limits. What you can do here, is you can limit the types of games, you can time limit them. So for example, I shouldn't say games, you can limit the types of apps. So let's say games. I wanna limit games. So I'm gonna click on games. I'm gonna hit next. And then you can set how much time they're allowed to go on games. So of that two hours I've now given them, they have two hour time frame where they can actually use that iPad. I only want them being able to play games for let's say 30 minutes. Now I can set that and I can toggle the block at end of limit and I can turn that on. So every day they're only allowed to play games for 30 minutes. Hit add, boom. Those are, those are now blocked after 30 minutes of play. And again, the iPad tracks all of that for you. You don't have to tell them. You just have to put it on the iPad and the iPad just remembers it and that's the way it is. You can do limits on social media, you can do limits on all sorts of things. Very, very cool. And the last thing I'll show you is the content and privacy settings. So if you, if it's the red one, the red uh, menu there on the uh, screen time, uh, what, yeah, anyway, I'm getting tongue twisted here. There's so many options on here, I'm losing my mind. Okay, so go to content and privacy restrictions. This is where you can actually limit specific types of content, making sure that things are age appropriate. Now in that content and privacy settings, if you look, it's about fourth from the top, it's in the second section, third one down, it says content restrictions. So click on that and it will give you a rating system that you want this iPad to um, be using. So you can use a Canadian rating system or whatever country that you're in and so you can set that. And then you can set the explicit level of the various types of content. So for example, under apps, Right now I have mine set to allow all apps, but you can change that and you can say only apps for up to four years old can be accessed. For books, you can put, I wanna make sure that all the books are clean books that they're accessing. TV shows, instead of all TV shows allowed, you can change that to maybe only G-rated TV shows allowed. Um, what else we got here? Music, podcasts, news, you can change that so it's only clean content. So you can change what type of content there is here. You can also look at web content. And so for web content, you can change that to um, either limited, uh, like limited adult websites so they can't get into any sort of explicit websites. Or if you wanna be really uh, locked down here, you can actually just say certain websites can be accessed. You can say allowed websites only, and then you can list what websites that you want it to be allowed. So 
there's a lot of options here for there's also like language restrictions you can block out explicit language multiplayer games there's a lot of things that you can block out now i don't know how 100 percent accurate this is I'm sure there'll be some things that slip through the cracks a little bit. It's the same with like YouTube children's. Sometimes there's some content that slips in there or an ad slips in there that might be inappropriate. It's hard to control those things completely, but at least this just gives you a line of defense. Um, when I've done it and I've set it up, I've noticed some of my apps have just all of a sudden disappeared from me being able to use it because of these content restrictions. So it's very, very helpful. Another thing in this content restriction area that I think is extremely valuable is being able to lock down the App Store, the iTunes App Store. So in the, the second one from the top there, so there's the content and private restrictions dongle where you can turn it on and off. And if you go to iTunes and app purchases, now you can disallow certain aspects of what they can get on the app store so first of all you can just prevent them from installing apps altogether so if you put don't allow there that means that the app store literally just doesn't appear on the ipad anymore you can also restrict them from deleting apps that you want on there and this is a massive one i know parents they come across this all the time like my kids downloaded like a million dollars in gems for their game and now i have to pay this you can actually turn off the in-app purchases so they can't purchase anything inside an app. So I don't have to tell them or it can just prevent the iPad from allowing them to do that. So that is also a very great thing. And make sure in this section that you check always require. It says on the bottom require passcode and you want to have checked always require. So they're always going to need a passcode in order to do any of these things. So another fantastic option and a, I think definitely a must that you put on your iPad for sure so I hope you enjoyed the video everybody I gave you a ton of information there are so many great new features on this new uh, iPad update this operating system update uh, and I'm glad that Apple did it they did a really really great job now I know the iOS 13 upgrade is coming soon and I hope they don't make more changes to this because I'm gonna have to do another video and as you can tell this video has a lot of content and there's a lot going on here. If you have any questions, make sure to put it in the comments below. I do check it very regularly. Other than that, thanks so much for checking out the channel, checking out this episode, which I know will add a lot of value to. If you want to reach me other places, you can go to theawarenessmodule.com. Once again, my name is PJ. I appreciate you watching. And if you want to check out some other videos that I've done, there's some more content over here on the side. And I think down in the corner, there should be a subscribe button. Hopefully, I can convince you to do that. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks for watching. Peace.